iPhones getting hacked, AT&T switching sides, a new secret messenger service, Google's cars getting in accidents, a new type of memory, and yeah, that whole thermal fake thing. These are today's bits. Do you own an iPhone? Do you watch porn on that iPhone? Well, if you do, you should be a little worried. Now cyber criminals in Japan have figured out a way to install malicious software on iPhones using an Apple developer account. There are actually a couple different levels of developer accounts that allow companies to distribute apps to their employees without having to go through the app store. This can be used for regular app development for games or just regular software, or it can be used for proprietary software that the company needs to operate on a day-to-day -day basis. The cheaper one coming in at $99 you have to actually register your iPhone with the account before you can push any apps to it. The more expensive $299 one though allows companies to push out apps to iOS devices without pre-registering them. This new trick from hackers is using the more expensive dev accounts to install rogue apps on people trying to click and watch porn videos. Known as the one-click fraud, it will still work on any iOS device whether it's jailbroken or not, and it'll force you into a membership for a porn site and then charge you money for it. Almost $800. That's a lot of porn. If you've been following the fallout between the FCC and the ISP giants, then you probably already know that AT&T is on the front line for the battle against net neutrality. Teaming up with the other giants, they plan on suing the crap out of anybody they can just to avoid it. Now, AT&T is trying to buy DirecTV. Nothing new. What is new is that they're willing to drop their stance on net neutrality in exchange for regulators' approval of said purchase. To be honest, I think they're just losing the battle and really want to try to get something out of the whole situation before they drop out of the race. I personally don't use either AT&T or DirecTV, so I kind of wonder how bad the merger would actually be for customers. I'm not saying that it's going to be good, I'm just saying I don't know. What I do know is that there's a new way to send nude selfies to people that's fast and secure. Well, at least so far. Bleep from BitTorrent has been in testing for a while now and offers a method for peer-to-peer -peer messaging that actually has end-to-end -end encryption. Its primary use, of course, is being to send nude photos and plan illegal activities. Well, you know, that's what the government thinks anytime they can't see what you're doing anyways. All you need is a username and off you go, sending those encrypted messages to your friends. You can even make peer-to-peer -peer encrypted phone calls. That's pretty cool. Nothing is stored on the cloud, so there's no risk of a huge security breach exposing millions of users just from one hack. Don't worry though, I did get in touch with somebody from the NSA and they said, quote, and unquote, it's okay, we'll find a way. Google's driverless cars and accidents? Eh, kinda, but it's not their fault. Google is now actually publicly reporting all accidents related to self-driving vehicles. They're doing this because of the rising concern of a bunch of computers driving around with 2,000 pounds of metal behind them. Turns out that over the last six years, there have only been 12 minor accidents. This number is even more astonishing when you learn that this is from 1.8 million miles of driving. Even better, not a single one of them were at fault to the Google's car. Most of them actually involved a regular driver or just rear-ending them at a stop sign. I think this actually says a lot for the new technology, and personally, I can't wait to have a bunch of people with driverless cars taking them to work, doing exactly the speed limit in the correct lane, staying out of my way as I speed past them. You know, not saying that I speed or anything. Nanotube memory, aka NRAM, could one day replace DRAM and or hard drives. This new concept of memory uses carbon nanotubes to provide a cheaper, more abundant form of storage while still being as fast as the regular RAM that we know today. Even better, that it's non-volatile, meaning it maintains data without power. Actually, it's not really new because it's been refined over the last 14 years, but with newer technology and production methods, it may actually start to show up in consumer products. Not anytime soon, of course, it still has to be purchased by a company and then developed more into a product. It did get me thinking though, could the idea of NRAM effectively change the way that a computer operates? I mean, if something was as abundant as a hard drive, as fast as DDR memory, and more reliable possibly than an SSD, would we even need those three different components anymore? I know that's kind of reinventing the way a computer works, but if it were possible for everything to be that fast, we might not even have to separate them at all. 
It has been talked about and talked about some more for over a week now, a thermal fake and their stolen design ideas. Now, I won't bore you with all the details because you've probably seen more than enough of it. I do, however, want to express my feelings on the matter. Yes, it is true. There are only so many ways that you can design a metal box, but when you design a metal box that resembles another metal box so much so that only the logo gives it away, then it's possible you stole an idea. I'm not saying that I haven't seen cases resemble other cases before, but in thermal fake situation, it seems to be a common practice for them to not to express any of their own creativity. I fully support using someone's idea though to inspire them to create something better. But if you do, then you should make it your own and make it as unique as you possibly can. But they didn't even try, which is kind of a letdown. I mean, I hope that they learn from this mistake and in the end, end up hiring a new designer. A few honorable mentions today include this guy that made a death laser in his garage, this guy who's flying on a tricycle, and a PC made into a wall wart. I'll link those in the description. As always, if you like this video, please click the like button below. And if you want to hear more, don't forget to subscribe.